Thank you for joining us for the KHSC Weekly Wrap Up. I'm Erin Briscoe Clark. There's been a crime at Vista High School and forensic science students have been called to the scene. Now it's their role to solve the case. It's a serial killer body dump. Yellow caution tape slowly sways in the breeze, securing the mock crime scene behind Vista High School. We're just trying to see what happened to uh, the bodies here. Uh, right now on Body 5, we kind of found some hair that might be animals, some human hair, and some fibers right there. Students spent the first semester learning crime scene protocols in the classroom. Today, they step into the role of crime scene investigators and put what they've learned to the test, a culmination of the Body Farm project. So they have six bodies to work and they're working the crime scene. They're collecting the evidence. They're going to take it back and analyze it and see if they can come up with the right suspect. We have little envelopes. We have safety goggles. We have swab sticks. We have gloves. We have capsules full of, uh, I think, rubbing alcohol. So we could put any type of maggot or larva in there. Armed with their CSI kits, the forensic students carefully navigate around evidence markers peppered on the ground, looking for key clues. Oh, here it is. Look at what Julio got. We got to get some of that, too. Oh, these are uh, maggot eggs. The forensics team takes notes and pictures, drawing an accurate depiction of the scene. They collect and analyze evidence to determine the cause of deaths, time of deaths, order of deaths, and ultimately identify a suspect and complete the official crime scene report. Probably try to get as much information to see what happened to the body, what stage it's at least decomposing in. I just want to get enough, well, we want to get enough information to just determine what happened to, uh, to this body. After all the evidence is collected, students will head back to the lab and get to work. Analyzing what evidence they found at what body and put the puzzle pieces together. They'll get information from the coroner to whatever corner found and they'll just piece it all together and come up with the right suspect. In the past, students have used their investigative skills and tools to solve the crime. Ms. Terry says this project not only provides students with real life experience, but they walk away with confidence. They love it. They enjoy it, especially when they, they love the labs, but when they get to do like real time lab, they love it. The California Highway Patrol says it responded to more than 25,000 calls involving illegal street racing last year. They are stories that impact our community. Illegal behavior now coinciding with society. Fong wrote Assembly Bill 3 last year. And one only hopes impacts change. Journalism students from across the district came together last week for the annual Journalism Day event and competition. Nothing beats good storytelling telling the truth, telling it accurately, and telling it in a compelling way. They got the opportunity to hear from local industry professionals reporting on stories we see on TV, read in newspapers, magazines, and online. Speaking to all the students today gives them an opportunity that I wish I had in school. I wish I was able to meet a journalist face to face when I was in high school thinking about this career field and humanize it. I think in one way, as a journalist, my work is to humanize and contextualize stories, and we're doing the same thing, but just in the context of humanizing and contextualizing our industry. Ridgeview teacher Kristen Hunter Flores helped revive Journalism Day a few years ago. I attended a Journalism Day back in 1997. I was a senior in high school, and it was an event that I remember to this day. It changed my life. Um, it's something that got me into journalism. It eventually led to a career as a journalism teacher. She remembers the drive she had as a young journalist in the past and hopes the event lights a spark in students for the future. Passion, passion for this field. We need more outstanding journalists and more journalists that are gonna be telling the truth. I've always been an advocate for change and whether that means like politically or you know, environmentally, it's very important. And I think spreading the truth and having people know, especially in such a politically driven climate right now, it's very important and that's what really drives me to do journalism. Students also got tips on enhancing their interview, photography, and storytelling skills. They are hearing from someone within the industry right now and they're learning how the skills they're learning in my classroom can parlay into actual jobs and how those jobs are being used right now. So it's a good opportunity for them to see that and also to get different perspectives, not just from their teacher. I learned some things uh, just to do with 
getting your feet wet, what's, what schools to go to um, now that I'm going to be going to college? They mentioned CSUN, which I did get accepted for. So hearing that from professionals that are actually got their degrees and graduated um, puts in a different aspect of which ways I should make my life choices. The day culminated with the Student Journalism Awards. We have a list of the winners posted on our website, kernhigh.org. <laughs> Students across Kern County recently competed in the 39th annual Kern County History Day, hosted by the Kern County Superintendent of Schools. Since the beginning of the school year, students have been preparing historical papers, exhibits, performances, documentaries, and websites aligned with this year's theme, Debate and Diplomacy in History, Successes, Failures, Consequences. Congrats to the following students who competed in the senior division and are eligible to participate in California History Day in May. Individual Performance, Alexander Fan, Centennial High School. Individual Website, Ananya Jane, Stockdale High School. Candace Lee, Stockdale High School, and Jana Chandrasekhar, Stockdale High School. And finally, group website, Bargavi Gulia and Manav Gulia, Centennial High School. Sanskriti Singh and Charita Suredi, Stockdale High School. Four KHSD seniors were recently honored for their leadership skills. Independence's Niam Edrelin, Highlands Christy Sue Lopez, Frontier's Catherine Serdinsky, and Bakersfield's Sydney Levin were presented with the DAR Good Citizens of Bakersfield Award. Recipients are selected by their teachers or peers for demonstrating dependability, service, leadership, and patriotism in their home schools and communities. Congratulations and way to lead. In news from the nest, Independence High School recently hosted its Mother Language Festival to spread awareness of the cultural diversity on campus. Hi guys, it's Nia Medula and I'm here at the International Mother Language Day Festival for United Nations. We're so excited to be able to host this event and I'm going to be going around a couple of tables to talk about what they're presenting. Let's go. This is the language of Hindi, it's the most spoken in India. Um, it's really cool to represent my culture here today and especially to dress up. It feels really nice to be, feel represented. Um, and it's nice to also teach about my culture because it also makes other people learn more and be more aware. Here are some traditions that are done in Hispanic culture over here. We have a quinceañera right up here, which is basically this, the party of a 15-year-old girl transitioning to womanhood. And it's celebrated with um, lots of friends and family in order to celebrate that. Okay. Do you want to talk about your trifold? Oh, uh, yes, of course. So our trifold is on the languages of Africa right now. And there's several different languages that are spoken in Africa. Swahili, Somali, Hoswa, Igbo, which is where my parents are from, actually. So they speak that kind of bit of around the house. This week, we celebrate our school social workers in honor of National School Social Work Week. This year's theme is Time to Shine because school social workers shine brightly for their students, families, and school communities. School social workers are trained mental health professionals in the social work field who bring their knowledge and skills to provide support to the school system and student services team. They help students deal with mental health and behavioral challenges while providing academic and classroom support. We want to send a huge Huge thank you to our school social workers for all they do today and every day to ensure our students are prepared to succeed in high school and beyond. You are appreciated. The KHSD Board of Trustees has proclaimed March as National Nutrition Month and this week as National School Breakfast Week. This year's theme is Take Off with School Breakfast. We want to acknowledge and thank our nutrition services workers for providing our students with meals and snacks and supporting our families, especially during the pandemic when they worked on the front lines to ensure our students' nutritional needs were met, enhancing their abilities to learn and achieve. Thank you for all that you do in the Kern High School District. Thank you for watching the KHSD Weekly Wrap Up. For more videos, please visit the Kern High School District Public Information YouTube page and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.